We've all been there, sitting in class as the professor drones on and on and on about something. You're not really sure what. You remembered thinking that it might be interesting, but then that voice and the lack of expression on his face. In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression, passed the, anyone, anyone, a tariff bill, the Hawley-Smoot Tariff Act, which anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs, in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government. Did it work? Anyone? Poorly delivered lectures can be brutal. The speeches are no different. You could have the most well-organized, well-prepared, well-written outline and speech ever, but if it's delivered with dry, boring indifference, then it has missed the mark. It simply won't be very effective. As the old saying goes, sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. With that in mind, let's talk about speech delivery. Researchers claim that upwards of 65 to 70 percent of all messages that we send and receive each day do not consist of words, but rather everything else. In communication studies, we call everything else, beyond the words themselves, nonverbals. In a speech, those nonverbals provide the basis for a speaker's delivery and can be broken down into two main categories vocal and physical. In this video, we'll take a look at vocal delivery. Vocal delivery includes everything that comes out of your mouth except for the words themselves. We're talking about your pitch or tone of voice, your volume, the rate at which you speak, and even your use of pauses. Each one of those aspects of your vocal delivery will send a message beyond the words themselves. Take a sentence as basic as Mary had a little lamb. Its meaning is pretty self-explanatory, right? There's not much to it. But what if I used my voice to emphasize different words in the sentence? Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Notice the difference? The first emphasizes the past tense, the second the size of the lamb, and the third the quantity. Same words, yet three different meanings and it's all the result of a different vocal emphasis. Emphasis is important, but the hallmark of a speech delivered with effective vocals is what we call vocal variety. The idea with vocal variety is found in the term itself. A speaker should vary her voice. We generally think it's a good idea to speak up or speak loudly during a speech, but if you were to do that the whole speech, it would probably become annoying for the audience. It's the same with your pitch and rate. No one wants to be described as monotonous, and speaking too quickly or too slowly in your speech for the entire speech will decrease the overall effectiveness of your speech and frustrate your audience. The goal is to mix it up, speed up your rate at times while slowing it down at others. By doing so, your speech will sound natural and conversational, which is an excellent goal on most speaking occasions. Thankfully, vocal variety isn't too difficult to achieve if you pick the right topics that you naturally care about. When we are invested emotionally in a topic, that enthusiasm typically comes through in our speech delivery. If it doesn't, we create an incongruency for our audience. In other words, it's not good when our emotion and enthusiasm do not match the message, when our nonverbals don't match our verbals. If you state in your speech about competitive archery that you love telling others about your favorite sport, yet we don't hear it in your voice, you'll come across as apathetic and insincere. Neither are particularly good qualities for an effective public speaker. The same can be said about serious and more solemn topics. Think about your perception of a speaker who smiles, even unintentionally due to nervousness, during his speech about preventing animal cruelty. It's definitely not a good look. That's why it is imperative that you match your emotions and enthusiasm to the message. Finally, you must also understand the importance of proper pronunciation and articulation in your speech. According to the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary, proper pronunciation means to say correctly, while articulation deals with the clarity of sounds. 
Both are extremely important to the effectiveness of your speech. For example, what would you think about a speaker who said Louisville or Louisville instead of Louisville? What about a speaker who says electoral college instead of electoral? Both are examples of pronunciation errors. What about a speaker who says probably instead of probably? Runnin' instead of running? What for instead of what for? These last few would be examples of poor articulation and a lack of clarity of sounds. Poor pronunciation will make the speaker seem ignorant or uneducated, while poor pronunciation often makes the speaker sound lazy. Both perceptions will ultimately hurt a speaker's credibility and her overall effectiveness as a speaker. Vocal delivery, your rate, pitch, volume, use of pause, emphasis, and more, is important, but so is your physical delivery, too. In the next video, we'll take a look at what you should be doing with your appearance, your facial expressions, your gestures, and your body, and maybe some habits you should avoid. But for now, remember this. Vocal variety and a conversational quality are important to the effectiveness of your speech. So the next time you deliver a speech, let's try to avoid going all Ben Stein on the audience, okay? Bueller. Bueller. Bueller.